Well, well ahoy, ahoy there, cruisers. cruisers. We're gonna tell you the seven things we really wish we knew before sailing with Royal Caribbean. And before we begin the video, make sure you subscribe now. Do it. So number one is carrying on drinks. Yep, you heard me right. You can carry on a certain amount of drinks. If there's somebody in your cabin over the drinking age, which there always probably will be, you can take up to two bottles of wine or champagne per cabin under the uh, 750 milliliters or less. You can also take on soft drinks or water, either 12 cartons, standard cans or bottles as well. If you take on anything over this, unfortunately, they're going to be confiscated from you when you check in and then given back it to you at the end of the cruise. This is a great way to save a little bit of cash and it means you can have a nice glass of wine in your cabin before going out, but make sure you do only consume these in your cabin, otherwise you'll have to pay a corkage fee on the bottles of wine. Well, corkage fees have been known to be charged and they're not charged, so there's about a 50% chance whether or not you're gonna be charged. But when you are boarding, please remember to pop those drinks into your hand luggage, because if they are in your main suitcase, which the porters handle, they'll be taken out. So you've gotta have them in your hand luggage when you board. I always go for one with the highest amount of alcohol to make the most. Good tip. <laughs> That's an alcoholic's tip. I just one. love it. It's pre-drinks in the cabin. It's my favourite thing. So when you're getting ready to go out for your yeah. meal and enjoy your evening on board, looking forward to the theatre and all of the different activities, you can have a few drinks in your cabin, pop it in your fridge if it's white wine or champagne. And yeah, as you say, ask your room server for a corkscrew. I'll happily give you one for free or she'll happily give you one for free. Fantastic, it does save you a lot of money. Even if you're on the drinks package, it's still quite nice to do. Mm. Number two is to make the most of the cruise planner before you sail. We didn't use this as much as we should have on our last cruise, and it's fantastic. On the cruise planner, you can plan things such as shore excursions, dining, and entertainment and activities on board. Yeah, you can basically book everything on there, your drinks packages, all of your activities, everything. It's really cool. It's got a calendar view on there as well. So it shows what you've got booked each and every individual night in terms of shows, activities, entertainment and shore excursions. It's a really good utility. And as David says, you book all of your little extras on yeah. there. It's really nice as well. You log in, it tells you how many days you've got to go. But you can really plan your cruise in depth. So it's usually a lot cheaper to book things onto the cruise planner before you even get onto the cruise. So you can pay things like your gratuities off, you can book restaurant packages and drinks packages, and they are much cheaper on there than when you get on the ship. And also, there's always really good deals. Every six weeks or so, or so Royal Caribbean shakes up the deals on the cruise planner, giving things like buy one, get one free offers, 10, 20% off certain things, so keep your eyes peeled. And if you're in Australia, Canada, or the US, you can book anything you want and then cancel it if you see a better deal. So say you've had 10% off a, a meal package, then you see they're offering 20% the next week. Cancel that first one, book the new package and get the better discount. Individual restaurants are usually the same price on the cruise planner as they are on the ship, but it's cheaper to buy a dining package before you go. Yeah, so you buy a set of meals, may it be three meals or five meals, mm -hmm. and you get a good little discount on there and it gives you the chance to try all that amazing specialty restaurants on board. So tip number three is all of the extra charges. Now this isn't anything unusual with Royal Caribbean. This goes for most cruise lines now. There's lots of extras and up charges, things like specialty restaurants, shore excursions, even things like gratuities, you're all extra money that you've got to take into consideration when you book. So when you book your cruise, it is the base price. It doesn't usually include things like gratuities and shore excursions and speciality dining and spa treatments. All of these are extra charges. You'll see a lot of people talk about nickel and dime in these days. It seems to be the thing that everyone says. But like Ben said, most cruise lines do this. You'll ha uh, There'll be a lot of upsell opportunities while you're on board as well. So don't be shocked if people are asking you to buy dining packages or spa treatments or the stores and are trying to lure you in to spend some money because that's what they want to do. That's how they keep the entry price of the cruise so low is by all these extras they charge when you're on board. But don't feel obligated to buy anything. Absolutely there are not. plenty of free places to eat and drink and enjoy the activities mm -hmm. so you don't have to pay as much. It's all up to you how much you want to pay. All we say is when you are planning your cruise, if there is some activities that you want to do, is to just factor that into your budget before you sail. But because these are all optional extras, it means that you're not paying for stuff you don't use. So for example, we're not really spa treatment people, are we? So we don't pay for the spa, that's fine. 
And at the moment, gratuities are coming in at $14.50 per person per day for a regular cabin. And they're $17.50 for the grand suite or above per person per day. So please take these into consideration. You can always pay, prepay these gratuities before you even get onto the cruise line, which we recommend because then once you get on board, you know you've paid all your mm -hmm. gratuities off already. And as we said, there's an 18% gratuity charge on things like individual drinks if you haven't got the package, spa packages, special speciality dining, all of that jazz. So you've got to take that into consideration as well. Number four is all about the dining options available on Royal Caribbean. Wow, we were really, really took aback about, about how much choice there really was on board. Not just paid for extra choice, I'm talking about the included dining as well. Of course, you've got your buffet, but don't forget some special things in the buffet, such as the chocolate fountain. That's a real Which treat. Which shows up on certain days, yeah, lovely. Yeah, they'll do that throughout your cruise. And also some of the special themed buffets as well that they'll do throughout the cruise as well. And also you've got Sorrento's Pizza, which is yummy pizza, all included in the cost of your cruise. And the Cafe Promenade or Cafe 270, which serves sandwiches, salads, snacks, and even breakfast items as well. So these are fantastic extra free options that we didn't really know about until we got on board, did we? No, and for speciality dining, well, wow, there is a huge choice as well. We really recommend trying at least one or two because there are some fantastic restaurants on board. Things like Jamie's Italian and Wonderland, Chops Grill, Giovanni's Table, loads from Asian cuisine to Italian to magical gastronomy. There's something for everybody. So we really do recommend that you um, try as many as you can. Mm. And these are not all, you know, big books, sit down restaurants. There's also smaller places as well where you can get a quick bite. We were actually really surprised by fish and ships on uh, Independence of the Seas. Oh, so good. Yeah, it wasn't overly expensive. I think it was about Couple of six dollars. or seven dollars yeah. for fish and chips. And it was a real nice oh, treat. Delicious. It was really lovely. And for food allergies and dietary restrictions, the cruise lines are really good with this now. We've seen really good sections in the Royal Caribbean buffet with gluten-free and things mm. like that. Just when you get on board, go find the head waiter and let him know your dietary restrictions or anything you don't eat or can't eat because of allergies. And they will do the best, the kitchen staff, to feed you as well as possible. Yeah, on boarding day, you'll find the maitre d' and the uh, culinary team located somewhere throughout the ship. So ask at guest services and it's usually in the main dining room and that's where you can go for anything related to food, any questions, queries or if you'd like to change what type of dining you have as well. But trust us, you are going to be spoiled for choice. There are so many different dining options on Royal Caribbean ships. Number five, we really wish we knew how addictive it was going to be to sail with Royal Caribbean. Absolutely genuine here, guys. We love Royal Caribbean. We've had the most fantastic holidays with them. We've had three different holidays now and we really love being on a Royal Caribbean ship. Just because there is so much to do, there's so much to eat, there's so many good things going on all the time. Trivia, live music, Broadway shows, amazing food, lovely cabins, lovely crew. You just really need to know how addictive this is before you start, because mm. we didn't think we'd love cruising before we started. Now we are completely and utterly hooked. Yeah, we are. They always say that the best way to get rid of the cruise blues is to book another cruise. And it is true because you do. We do find ourselves doing that a lot. Yeah. If you would like to book another cruise while you're on board, there will be the next cruise desk. These will offer you special offers and promotions to lure you and entice you to book your next cruise there and then. But we always say compare these with prices online and it's good to have an idea of what cruise you'd like to do before you do go and chat to the next cruise people. If you have booked with a travel agent too, they can then transfer that booking to your travel agency as well. And that brings us on to tip number six, which is booking. We really recommend booking as early as yeah, possible. Definitely. Royal Caribbean put their cruises online and for sale up to two years in advance. Mm -hmm. And trust us, guys, 99% of the time, the earlier you book the cruise, I know it's ridiculously in advance, the cheaper you're going yeah. to get it. Because this is when it's all about supply and demand. And obviously, there's a lot of supply and not as much demand right at the beginning. 
this, the more and more they sell, the price tends to yeah. go up. And unfortunately, last minute cruisers are really not as much as what they used to be. So you're not going to find them really fantastic deals as much as you used to, just because Royal Caribbean is super popular. And if you do get a good deal, you're not going to get the good choice on cabins and itineraries and things like that. So we do really recommend booking as early as possible. So if you're in the USA, Canada or Australia, you have the benefit much better than we do in the yeah. UK, where you can reprice your cruise if you book with Royal Caribbean up to 90 days before your cruise. So say you have booked it right two years in advance and the price drastically drops for the same cabin or same cabin type 90 days before, you can ask Royal Caribbean to reprice your cruise. Unfortunately, we don't get that here in the UK. Complete rip off Britain. <laughs> Yeah, we have this, we moan about this all the time. Unfortunately, you'd have to cancel your cruise, lose your deposit and rebook. But like I say, if you have paid a £50 deposit, a reduced deposit rate, it still may be cheaper it to cancel your cruise. It makes sting a little bit less. Yeah, it's unfortunately, we don't have that option. So tip number seven is about the dress code on board Royal Caribbean. Before we cruise, we thought we were going to be in our tux and, tux and tails every single night. And that's completely not true. During the day, you can wear pretty much whatever you like. Shorts, t-shirt, you know, summer wear or winter wear if it's a winter cruise and uh, swimwear around the pool. And on an evening, it's pretty casual. Uh, trousers and a t-shirt you can get away with yeah. unless it's a formal night. But don't be scared of the formal nights. They're not as strict as you'd imagine. You can get away with a nice pair of chinos and a shirt. You don't even have to wear a tie or a jacket or anything like that. And ladies, it's the same. You can get away with a nice dress or a nice pants suit, trouser suit, yeah, or a nice blouse, blouse, whatever. You don't have you to. Know. What you'd normally go out for dinner with while you're at yeah. home. It really isn't strict. Don't be scared of it. Formal nights is usually one on a three to five night cruise. On a seven night cruise, you'll usually find two formal nights. And on 14 nights or more cruises, oh, super lucky people, there's up to three formal nights. But yeah, do not be scared of them. And if you don't want to get involved with them, these dress codes are only stuck to the main dining room. So you can go to the buffet or eat some somewhere else and you don't have to get mm -hmm. dressed up. Well, that's it for this tips on Royal Caribbean show. If you have any tips for us that you'd like to share with us, please leave a comment below. And if you like this video, please, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us uh, spread our video even further. And don't forget to subscribe. And a big thank you to our Patreons. Cruise captain this week is Amy. Ahoy. So that's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising. cruising.